Thank you. Our next item of business this afternoon is topical questions, and our first question is from Beatrice Wishart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that the number of primary schools exceeding their capacity is increased by a third since 2009. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding Officer, school occupancy levels will vary due to changes in pupil population arising from local factors such as housing developments and parental choice. The proportion of primary schools at or exceeding their capacity has increased by 35.4% since 2009, but secondary schools at or exceeding their capacity over the same period have fallen by 46.5%. The change in primary school levels represents 1.4% of all primary schools. It is the statutory responsibility of all local authorities to manage and maintain the school estate in Scotland. However, through our £1.8 billion Schools for the Future programme, and its successor, the £1 billion Learning and State Investment Programme, we are supporting local authorities to deliver high-quality learning environments for our children and young people. Through the Learning and State Investment Programme, we will consider issues with capacity on a case-by-case -case basis in collaboration with local authorities. Beatrice Wizard. The Scottish Government's own statistics show that there's now 111 primary schools that are at or over capacity, and that's up 83 in, from 2009. Some pupils are being crammed into schools and classrooms that weren't designed to operate with the number of pupils they accommodate. The EIS is clear that overcrowding, quote, has significant implications for the educational experience of young people, unquote, and that overcrowded environments are not conducive to learning. What does the Cabinet Secretary's response to these very real concerns and don't overcrowding and larger classes hinder efforts to close the attainment gap? Cabinet Secretary. I think we need to uh, retain a sense of perspective around some of these questions. Um, Beatrice Wishart has uh, correctly set out the figures at 111 primary schools in 2018 uh, were at or above 100% capacity. That has fallen by 34% since 2016. So the number pe peaked at 169 in 2016, and the current level is lower than at any year since 2012. And as I indicated in my earlier answer, this represents a very, very small change in the overall school uh, number of 1.4%. Now, I believe fundamentally in investments in the school estate and ensuring that young people are educated in a high quality learning environment. That's why I'm so pleased that since 2007, when this government came to office, we have managed to reduce the number of pupils educated in schools in a poor or bad condition from 37% of all pupils in Scotland to 10% today, which is a phenomenal achievement in the face of the austerity with which this government has been wrestling. So uh, I take these issues seriously. Uh, we invest in the school estate and we also invest in teacher numbers, which are crucial in closing the attainment gap. And I'm very pleased that the statistics that came out in uh, December demonstrated that the pupil-teacher ratio in Scotland, which is the key measure of educational engagement, um, has been stable for another year. Beatrice Swisher. Thank you. Um, the Cabinet Secretary refers to um, the teacher numbers, but the EIS also told the Herald that jam-packed classrooms have significant implications for teacher workload. The government tells us that um, what it's doing about teacher recruitment, and in fact we know that there are 2,853 less teachers in Scottish schools, schools than when the SNP came to power in 2007. One current example um, is one of the S3 classes at the Anderson High School in Lerwick, where there's no English teacher. And I know this because one of my grandchildren is in that class. So pupils, some pupils are being let down and already overworked teachers are being left to pick up the pieces. Can you explain why 12,000 more primary pupils being taught in supersized classes that are being taught in supersized classes compared with 2012? Cabinet Secretary. Um, there's a number of issues in, in there, Presiding Officer. Um, the number of, uh, I'm obviously engaged in dialogue with the EIS around teacher workload. Um, we are taking forward a lot of very good joint work to make sure that as part of the pay and workload deal, which saw teachers receiving a very significant increase in their salary, um, measures have been taken to reduce uh, their workload and indeed 
um, some of the time that is necessary to enhance learning and teaching has been able to be taken forward due some of, through some of the additional um, in-service days that the government has provided for. Um, in relation to the uh, number of pupils in um, large classes, the number of pupils in P1 classes of 26 or more has almost halved since 2018 and has fallen from 16,845 in 2006 when this government came to office to just 267 in 2019. That equates to around 10 classes in the whole of Scotland's schools. So we are taking um, a number of steps to ensure that young people are uh, educated in smaller classes. Um, I would point out to uh, Beatrice Wisher in relation to the issue in teacher numbers, teacher numbers are at their highest level since 2010 and as a consequence and, and, and that has been achieved despite the austerity that the government has had to wrestle with, the local authorities have had to wrestle with and of course that was ushered in for us by a Conservative government supported by the Liberal Democrats at Westminster. So the irony of Beatrice Wishart's uh, question to me today is not in any way lost on me as a consequence of the actions of the Liberal Democrats. Daniel Johnson. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to begin by thanking uh, Beatrice Wishart for raising these issues because they are of particular concern in my constituency where I have four schools with school rules of uh, 600 or around 600 or above. The Cabinet Secretary stated in his answer that uh, capacity would be taken on a case-by-case -case issue with uh, relevance to the Learning Estate Investment Programme. But can I ask the Cabinet Secretary uh, whether that should be incorporated more systematically within those criteria? I understand that LEIP is still being finalised uh, and, and, uh, because surely a growing city like Edinburgh needs investment in its schools. Cabinet Secretary. Well, on the data, um, in Edinburgh City Schools, um, there was, on the most recent data that I've got available to me on secondary schools, um, there is uh, one school um, that uh, the number of secondary schools that have fallen um, in, in terms of uh, operating at 100, over 100% capacity has fallen by one secondary school in Edinburgh. And indeed, in relation to primary schools, the number fell in two, from 2017 uh, at 19 to 8 in 2018. So good progress has been made there by the City of Edinburgh Council. In relation to the questions of capacity um, within the, or questions of capacity being considered within the Learning Estate Investment Programme, these issues are included and indeed led to my decision to award funding for a new secondary school uh, under the auspices of Midlothian Council around the A701 corridor because of the population expansion that is taking place to the south of the City of Edinburgh adjacent to um, Midlothian Council. So these issues are very much involved in those discussions and I look forward to discussions with the City of Edinburgh Council as we look forward to the next phase of bids in the Learning Estate Investment Programme which I expect to conclude uh, during the autumn of this coming year. And Fulton McGregor. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the um, newspaper article at the weekend. He may also be aware that six of the 17 schools operating at overcapacity in North Lanarkshire, which was referenced, are in Coatbridge and Chryson. This includes Chryson, Steps, St Kevin's, Glenboy, Garkosh, and St Mary's. One thing that these schools have in common is that they're in areas of housing growth and development. The countless constituents who have spoken to me about these issues are often frustrated at why the rapid increase in pupil rules does not appear to be anticipated or factored in locally. Can I ask what the Scottish Government do to support councils to be more proactive in increasing school capacity where there are large-scale developments and therefore predictable increases in number of pupils requiring a place at local schools. Cabinet Secretary. But th th this point really is at, was at the heart of my um, original answer to Beatrice Wisher, that school occupancy levels will vary due to invariably decisions taken by local authorities in terms of development and housing expansion within localities. So many local authorities, well, local authorities have a statutory duty to ensure that they have adequate school estate to meet the needs of pupils in their area, as they are also responsible for planning decisions in relation to the, allocate, the zoning of land for housing and the approval of individual developments, it's incumbent on local authorities to look at all aspects of these questions as they settle the size of the school estate that's appropriate in their area. And I, I, I encourage local authorities to act in the fashion that Mr McGregor has set out to Parliament today. Thank you. Question number two, Colin Smith. 
Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that complaints about Caledonia sleeper services have increased by 221 per cent. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. President Officer, it's already well documented that in 2019 the introduction of the new Caledonia sleeper carriages has been difficult for the operator and passengers. The manufacturer CAF uh, did not provide sufficient vehicles. Uh, in, service, in, in a service-ready state uh, to allow full service, uh, full service introduction. The increase in complaints is uh, related to last year's summer period when new trains had reliability problems and the 1970s and 1980s rolling stock was in continued use on some routes. We know the vast majority of the rise in complaints relates to on-train quality issues which are being resolved. Uh, the Scottish Government continues to monitor Caledonia Sleeper closely. A performance improvement plan is being implemented following below target performance. Uh, this is working well and we're already seeing uh, performance improvements as a result. Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. The Cabinet Secretary referred to the improvement plan for CERCO, but given the failure of multiple improvement plans on the ScotRail franchise, why should anyone have any faith that this improvement plan will work? The government accepted that the Abilio ScotRail franchise they awarded has failed. Isn't it the case, Cabinet Secretary, the government also got it wrong when they awarded this franchise? Cabinet Secretary. Episode officer, unfortunately, the member is confusing two different things here. The complaints issue is relation to service provision on the actual Caledonia sleeper itself, uh, and the improvement plan does not relate specifically to that. The improvement plan relates to wider issues around Caledonia, uh, the Caledonia sleeper, which includes uh, such as, uh, issues such as punctuality. Uh, but the member will recognise that the data which was published just last week is actually saw during the autumn period uh, a significant improvement in ScotRail services um, uh, and punctuality within ScotRail, a direct consequence of the remedial plan which was put in place. However, the improvement plan in this matter does not relate to the actual complaints about on-service matters, it's about punctuality and wider issues uh, within the service in order to see, make sure we see improvements, and we're already starting to see those improvements happening. Thank you, President Officer. It's still not clear to me um, how that improvement plan will work when previous improvement plans uh, instigated by this government and our rail services failed miserably. But the reality is, President Officer, we have complaints <laughs> up 221%. We have a performance level today, not in the summer, but today, closer to breach than to target on the Serco services. We've got emergency exit windows that recently, frankly, won't open. We've got trains overshooting platforms. We've got services introduced in the north of Scotland a year late. We've got staff walking out due to high stress levels and workload. Surely the Cabinet Secretary accepts that the current service isn't good enough. Will he apologise to those passengers putting up with an inferior sleeper service? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Senator Officer, uh, I need to reiterate the point. The very purpose behind the improvement plan is to see improvements, and we're already seeing those improvements, improvements in punctuality and also in wider service provision. Alongside that, we're seeing a reduction in the level of complaints which we're getting from passengers because of on-board service provision as a result of the actions which have been taken in order to close out some of the technical issues on the new rolling stock. So the overall picture is one which is one of improving. Uh, I very much welcome that. I recognise that staff are working very hard to address these deficiencies and some of the challenges which have been associated with the new rolling stock and introduction of new rolling stock. And what the focus is on is making sure that those improvements are sustained and continue. Jamie Green to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you, presiding Officer. Um, this uh, iconic service uh, really has the potential to improve tourism, business, connectivity, but also help us meet some of our climate objectives. But clearly there are problems, and clearly many customers are unhappy, both on the recliner service and on the cabin services. Um, given that these trains may be around for some decades, um, can I ask what conversations the Cabinet Secretary has had with the current operator on the potential for any improvements or retrospective upgrades to the CAF fleet, uh, which may be able to uh, uh, be installed to improve that passenger experience, and if the operator has shown any desire or willingness to engage on retrospective upgrades to the service that may, uh, may make more customers happier and more likely to recommend it to others. Yeah, Officer, there's a range of work which has been undertaken. Not only have I engaged with um, uh, at CERCO on this matter, I've also engaged directly with the 
uh, senior executives within CAF around the specific problems which have been experienced with the introduction of the new rolling stock. Uh, there are a range of measures which have been taken forward as a result of that. There's been a rolling programme of uh, technical work, retrospective technical work that has been undertaken on the new rolling stock by CAF in order to close out what have been ongoing issues uh, that have had an impact on passenger experience. Uh, good progress has been made uh, on that matter, uh, according to Caledonia Sleeper, and they expect that work to be completed in the next couple of months, uh, which will ensure that all of the technical issues which have had an impact on uh, passenger experience have been uh, closed out. Alongside that, they've also uh, taken the opportunity to review a number of the arrangements they have in place, uh, for example, around cleaning services and also for laundry services, which has resulted in improvements as well. So the picture of what we have saw over uh, the last couple of months is one of improvement. And the focus must be on making sure that we sustain that and building that going forward. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by John Finney. Um, Cabinet Secretary, I had occasion to use the Caledonian sleeper travelling south on the 23rd of October and returning uh, the following day. Um, there was a bit of alarm on my part uh, when one of these journeys arrived 22 minutes early because I thought I uh, had done something wrong. But can I take the opportunity and will you join me in congratulating the staff on board the Caledonian Sleeper? I found the onboard service beyond complaint. The breakfast was absolutely magnificent. And I know that other passengers on those two journeys shared my delight at the new service. Well, President Officer, that's a very good advert for making use of the calendar and sleeper, given uh, Stuart Stevenson's own experience. I, I do think um, it is important that we do recognise the, the progress that has been made. It, it may be of interest to members uh, that uh, since action has been taken to address a number of these issues, we've actually seen an increase in sales uh, and train occupancy. It continues to grow since the new year. Uh, Calendar and Sleeper has seen the number of days uh, for bookings going to record levels for forward sales. Uh, also, Caledonia Sleeper yesterday had the highest ever daily sales uh, figures, uh, which is very encouraging to see with a, particularly, a particular increase in the number of international bookings uh, being made for the service. And since the introduction of the new trains in October, journeys have now increased by 20.8% on the same period the previous year. So we can see that there is a real appetite to make use of this service uh, and it's attracting new people to make use of the service. What we want to do is to make sure that it is of the highest possible standards. It complies with the provisions which are set out within the franchise agreement and that's what the focus is on uh, achieving and the improvements we have saw in recent months and the figures which we've saw seen of late demonstrate that that improvement is starting to reap benefits. John Finney to be followed by Angus MacDonald. Um, thank you, President Officer. Cabinet Secretary, we would all want everyone to enjoy the same experience that Mr Stevenson did. Personally, I would like to see it happen in the public sector rather than with that particular uh, pernicious company. But as of this morning, <coughs> excuse me, there are still ongoing issues with the doors to the berth not opening. People are being, uh, it takes multiple attempts to get people in. People are shut out, shut, shut in. Um, you will be aware, and it's been alluded to already, of the alarm. The um, emergency exit windows are locked. Now, whilst that's not in itself, we're assured, a primary means of egress during an emergency, but of course, coupled, coupled with problems with the doors, that's a significant health and safety risk. When will that be rectified, please? Yep, so this relates to the work which uh, Caledon and Sleeper are taking forward with CAF, which they expect to be completed over the uh, next couple of months. The other thing it's important to reassure members of here is that the actions which are taken by Caledon and Sleeper relating to any safety matters on the vehicles uh, has the oversight of the ORR. And my understanding in relation to the emergency window issue, which the member uh, made reference to, is that the actions which have been taken forward to address that matter uh, is one which the ORR are satisfied with. So any safety issues and the safety arrangements on uh, the Canada Jones Sleeper are issues which are uh, within the responsibility of the ORR to ensure that they are satisfied with the actions which have been taken. Uh, and my understanding is that they are satisfied with the measures which have been put in place. And Angus MacDonald. I um, welcome the measures being taken to speed up the, the handling of complaints. Um, given the service has continued to see an increase in sales 
uh, as the Cabinet Secretary has referred to in his response to Stuart Stevenson. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what steps are being taken to ensure onboard service conditions and quality are maintained going forward? Cabinet Secretary. Well, some of the specific measures which have been taken forward is that Caledonia Sleeper are working uh, with the staff to continue its operational excellence training programme, uh, which was a programme agreed with the trade unions. And they've also recruited additional onboard staff to manage the transition to the new uh, fleet. It's also uh, working with the manufacturer CAF, as I've mentioned, to close out any residual on-train defects. Uh, and this is expected to be completed in the next uh, couple of months. Uh, additionally, and since the introduction of the new trains, Caledonia Sleeper has also uh, been reviewing some aspects of its supply chain, including uh, catering and cleaning supplies, and we saw positive, uh, the positive impact of these. Alongside that, Caledonia Sleeper is also engaged directly with Transport Scotland's Squire inspection team, uh, and it's using the team's feedback to continue to focus on areas of improvement. Thank you very much, and that concludes topical questions.